for now. And I'm going to read your bio. I'll roll the show out. Just, just follow me. <laughs> It'll okay. be all right. I will try the best I can. So, yeah. I, so I'm going to wait and get everything set up. Take me about two minutes. Okay. So okay. We're, li we're live on Facebook now. Okay. Now, it's going to just show my picture, and that's okay, but I'm going to show your website. I'm going to show the audience your website at times. Thank you so much. It's so actually... Huh? Can you, can you see the screen? I can see the screen. I can see you very, okay. very clear. Yeah, okay. and hear you also very... Okay. Um, hear you loud and yeah, clear. So I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to pull up your website so they don't have to look at my face the whole time. And we'll talk about the website and that way they can also see your picture from time to time. Okay. So yeah. let me, let me go yeah. in here and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to check it and make sure it's okay. Let's see what we got here. Okay. We got 18 people here so far. Let me check the sound 20. Okay, we got it. Okay, everybody, how you doing? Uh, Todd Medina, Soul Speaks 5D, Sold You One Network. We got a really special show today. Uh, really special lady, Divine Feminine, with us, Ingrid Esme Ferrer Esno. I hope I got that right. Yeah, <laughs> you did. <laughs> Absolutely, it's right. So she can't uh, get her picture on there because of her, her streams not strong enough so we're going to put up her website in a little bit and let you see her beautiful face and we're going to talk to her for the next hour if these shows resonate with you please share we would really appreciate it um and thank you um for your continued love and support and contributions to keep us going so we can continue to do this because right now we're 100 percent viewer supported we're working on changing that but uh thank you so much uh for all the support Hello, Gina Gazda and Mary Cooper, Carl Streener, Charlene Castanetis, Marie Iverson from Sweden, Tio Guadalupe, we need to get together. Uh, me, you, and Morgan have a video cam conference or whatever. Lisi Roiland, that's my friend I was telling you about in Stavanger. I can't pronounce it the way it's supposed to be pronounced. <laughs> Stavanger. Eh? Stavanger, yeah. Okay. And Pauline. <laughs> Pauline Kudahar, Amy O'Brown, Isabel Kalako, Judy Litke, uh, Vicky Diane Bailey, Susie Potensnik, uh, Maria Spanner, Dave Yellen, Brent Ritchie, long time no see Brent, good to see you. Uh, Wanda Goulding Young, Julie Hilton, 26 people here. Let me just share this to the network of uh, Solzy and its uh, affiliate groups. Shout out to the event is happening, Rising Above, Lisi and Damon, uh, 144 Club, News and Revelations of the Light, Juan Jose Civicos Vallejo, uh, Spiritual Healers, 1111 Movement, Jessica Woods, uh, Infused Lights, Galactic Federation of Light, Twin Flame Healing Network, and that will be it for now. Okay. So we got 28 people here. Uh, we've got a few more people stepped in. Lorraine Middleton, Susan Hoffman, Charlotte Egeling, Ulrika Halibran, Antoinetta McCarthy, Amanda Lowe's, Maureen Healy, and Lana Anderson Bradshaw. Thank you all for joining us today. We have a really cool show, a really good show. I'm excited about it. I noticed uh, I went to uh, our guest page, and he has uh, quite a few of my friends following her and other our friends following her and rightfully so because she writes some dynamite stuff i know morgan's been reading her stuff for years and we've got a lot of norwegians in the crowd today stephen michael jones is here ingrid peterson okay so like i said if you would please share to your page or to a group and so we can stay above the algorithms of facebook uh let me give you a little background on our guests uh she was born in a very small town in the middle of norway she was born open and knowing her entire life. Uh, she's been able to communicate and see angels, highly ascended beings, and been a medium of high sensitivity. Uh, it made her become a rebel. So she has something in common with me and most everybody listening. <laughs> and, and that was transformed into a real diva 
and a wild woman after being diagnosed with breast cancer and three near-death experiences. So welcome to the show, Ingrid. Uh, thank you for honoring us with your presence and sharing space with us today. Uh, thank you so much, right back to you, Todd, for being interviewed to this show. And thank you to everybody that are listening. I feel so privileged and honored to really do this and, and to really be able to be, in a way, uh, have the opportunity to really share what I'm passionate about and what I can't get enough of expressing and have this platform to your uh, radio station is really, really wonderful. And it, I'm so happy and I'm so glad that I'm giving the, given that this opportunity. And also, I just have to say, please forgive me if I have the wrong English words because I'm not always this uh, that good in knowing the exact English words and things like that when I'm trying to explain myself or trying to express what I wanted to say. So please forgive me. And uh, <laughs> You're doing fine. Thank you're you doing, so much. <laughs> you're doing absolutely fine. Don't, don't worry about that at all. You're doing Thank great. you. Absolutely. Okay, I'm trying to fix this thing. <laughs> I did something wrong. But that's okay. So let me ask you now. You that was a great bio. We got a lot of people uh, coming in to the to the uh, show now. We got fifty two people here. Uh, Charlene Castaneda says that's perfect English with a big heart. So don't worry about it. You're doing great. Oh God, this really makes me so emotional. So uh, I'm I'm just have to warn you. I I'm a ease, I cry easily also. So thank you so much for that. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, and you can cry. I do it all the time on this show. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm, sounds I'm, so good. I'm I'm way past the uh, way past the point of embarrassment. I think yeah. you know that's one of the things that uh, we've all got to get used to get past the point of embarrassment. Yeah, you know, absolutely. There's, no, there's nothing to hide and there's nothing to worry about. You know, we, we've got it. So you you had uh, you woke up and you were I mean you woke up you you came in woke up. Uh, that must have been a challenge to you growing up, having those skills and abilities and the vision uh, into the other side. Was it difficult for you in regard to uh, functioning with your family and in society in general? Yeah, uh, it really was. It was really difficult and it was really traumatic uh, many times because I grew up in a family that uh, um, my father was extremely abusive um, and being taught my mom was also an alcoholic and a psychopath and coming into a family um, structures that was so um, that really had had uh, really forgotten who they really was and and coming in and be completely open because slowly most of us we are we are shutting down just to survive. Uh, we cannot handle um, all this um, dysfunctional um, system or, or strategy or what you call it in a family. So slowly we start to forget and we start to take in and believe in these uh, concepts and uh, lies and and yeah all of it that are in every family that are that are, have forgotten who they really are yeah um so yeah it was really tough it was hard and it was really traumatic um but so i got angry because i didn't understand why i didn't get the help from um God and from angels that I have been able, as I said, to see and, and communicate my entire life. I was angry and I was so afraid um, because, as I said, I never, I never forgot. I never was able to shut down. So um, instead of, of um, be this obedient girl that my parents wanted me to be. Um, 
um, instead I became slowly more and more um, is resilient the right word yes. uh, or res yeah and resistance to this um, yeah to this to this um, the the need they have to make me obey and be um, be rebel. more like other girls <laughs> rebel <laughs> rebellious. Yeah. Yeah, so I slowly I started to really become a rebel. I was 16 years old when I moved away from home and I was uh, I was angry at everything that was false. And of course, sometimes I also believe that there would be something wrong with me that I couldn't obey, that I couldn't fit in because my parents tried very hard. So of course, sometimes I started to doubt myself, to doubt my what I saw and what I experienced when it came to the so-called mystic world or what you call it. But at the same time, it was so profound and so clear and it stayed clear my entire life. Yeah. So I was angry um, at people that was false. I was angry at angry people. I was angry at everything that didn't allow me to be who I really am. Yeah. Um, when I was 16 years old, as I said, I moved away from home and uh, um, with the history that I had, of course, I ended up with, the, with my, my first husband when I was 17 years old. And of course, he had the similar um, um, behavior as my dad. And um, I didn't see that. I didn't understand that. Not until many years after when I was married the second time many years after that. And I started to study psychology and and I got my education as a psychiatry nurse uh -huh. um, and started to work in a, a small private um, psychology, no, psychology clinic. Is that uh -huh. what you call it? Psychiatric clinic? Psychiatric clinic, yes. Thank you. You're very welcome. So that, that was an, at the beginning, actually, of my awakening. I started to really feel that when I was studying um, psychiatry and psychology, I started to see the similar things in my behavior and it, that it wasn't anything wrong with me, actually. Um, and that made me feel that I wanted more. I needed more. I really had to understand more about me. But that that part, the the knowledge about um, psychology and and things like that only took me so far. Um, there was one evening that I just had enough. I had. I had my daughter uh, and um, I was really, really tired. And this was, as I also been told many years later, uh, um, something called the harmonic convergence. The harmonic convergence. Yes, and that was in 87. And my life started to collapse slowly in 87, but I didn't understand fully what that was about, not until years later that I was told in a channeling that that was when the whole so-called collapse of the old patriarchal structures and era. Um, oh, in 1987 is when that actually occurred. I think I've heard that before. You mean on a collective yeah. level? Now, what, what, is the yeah. harmo what is harmonic convergence? Was that also applying to your own individual experience? Yeah, it was. It was this. It was the collapse of the old, the old era, the old structures, the old belief systems, old spirituality, religions, all of the things. It was a collapse, um, and my life started slowly co to collapse. Also, so I was extremely tired. And one evening, I just said to God, "Please, please take me home, because I really don't want this anymore. This is too." way too tough um, and um, that uh, the day after I was told 
to become silent, to listen. Yeah. Um, because I was told that I know, I know what it's all about. Yeah. Um, still, it um, took me some more years before I had to take my daughters with me and move away from their father. And I ended up in, um, in, um, in a course about transforming um, or healing your inner wounded child. Wow. And that was really so profound for me. And that really, for me, ended everything. Uh, and without knowing, it shattered also everything. My life completely, totally collapsed. Um, and um, um, I started then to read all these um, spiritual books like Conversations with God with Needle Walsh, um, Greg Braden, Byron Katie, Deepak Chopra, all these big teachers. I started to read them and I couldn't get enough. I believed in the beginning that, oh God, this will really take me to a better life. Yes. Now I really will get my life back on track. And my, I was then uh, um, being in, I, I had my own business um, and believing that now I will only get this wind in my sails that really will bring me to success and everything like. I was dreaming about yes uh without knowing that oh no 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 that was just the beginning of even more <laughs> collapse <laughs> did you, even more <laughs> did you have a did you have a point i mean you, you got married at 17 18 you had uh children uh and and throughout the journey you were describing did, did you have any point where you went to sleep where you just went 3d or blocked it all out no no, I, I, as I said, I never could. Yeah, it was completely. Um, I, I, it was impossible. But I tried. I tried yeah. absolutely to shut down. Yeah. I tried absolutely to to avoid it all. And I remember also there was an evening where a big fear came into me, and where I was thinking that I just want to go to sleep and wake up when everything was over. So of course I knew subconsciously that what was coming. Um, I knew that on one level. Yeah. Um, you knew, I, uh, you mm -hmm. knew that you knew that heaven was coming through the road of hell. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for describing it like that because that was. It, absolutely what it was it was really hell and but i tried to deny hell for a long time yeah. believing in this old spiritual saying that think positive and uh -huh. and um, later also when i was listening to these gurus like muji and mm -hmm. and this uh, other gurus that telling that observe your feelings and be detached from it and i tried i really yeah. tried and I got so frustrated because I didn't understand why it didn't work. Because I was, as I said, I was open. I, it, there was no problem for me to feel and see the presence of God's light and angels and, and people that has crossed over. Yes. So, yeah. So, so, you, so you, knew the, you knew the other side of the veil always. Absolute, absolutely. And then, always. You're, and then you're at this stage where... You're listening to, and I, and I, I, I have to uh, do some work on myself because I have a little difficulty with these, the Eastern, uh, the Eastern spirituality, the, you know, the detached, you know, as the observer, don't feel like you're talking about, because yeah. that was, a, that was a big deal for me when I learned how to feel myself and allow my emotions. Yeah. But so you, you, uh, you sounds, it sounds like you went through this stuff uh, much earlier than most people uh and, and then and then what uh 2012 comes around uh did you start to at some point understand that other people were like you yeah i started to understand that in in 1998 99 
because that was when I really started fully to study all the spiritual um, uh, books and and reading them. And I went into these courses like like holotropic breathwork, um, psychodrama, all these things. So I really started to understand it. Oh God, uh, there's nothing wrong with me. Uh, but it still took me some years, and it was uh, in 2000, I decided to take with me my daughters and move back to Sundalsøra, which is a small, as I said, a small town in the middle of Norway, because that was the place that I was born and lived till I was 16 years. I understood that I had to move back home and to really go back to where everything happened. Yeah. I had to go and see the house that I grew up in. Yeah. I had to go back to the memories, to the abuse. Uh, I was two years old. The first time I was beaten so severe that I woke up in the ice cold concrete floor with the, the naked and the blood was uh, glued to this concrete floor. Um, I had to go back to all this, this um, traumas because that went on for 16 years, that severe abuse. Wow. Uh, and um, I understood slowly, I started to understand that I can not, not feel it all because I have also tried to not feel it because it was so traumatic. I had tried to shut down and I believe that my anger, that was the inner rebel in me, was what protected me and made me powerful and, and also made me able to survive. But wow. slowly I started to understand that I really have to feel it all again. Um, I had a really good friend at that time that also was the best teacher for me. Uh, and she was capable of really not um, believing the victim in me. She said many times that you are not a victim. You need to remember who you are again. And when you do that, you are also safe to feel it all again, to transform this and really enter the freedom that you are, the power of the freedom that you are. So I started to do that. I started to work with myself. And um, in 2005, and I know now that working with myself by really going into my own feelings and feel them again, prepared me for the breast cancer that I was diagnosed with in 2005. Let, let, me, and, let, me, let me ask you real quick. Yeah. Because I want yeah. to hear all of this. Uh, so your friend came to you after you moved back to your hometown where everything happened for the first 16 years and she basically came to you and said you were not a victim remember who you are uh and then kind of you started to em empower yourself uh and then you were able to look at your feelings and be able to feel them is that what you're saying yeah yeah, okay. yeah. and that was that was the most um, what can I say, the most uh, vital and the most important healing work I could ever do. Um, and that, uh, because when, when you forget about uh, thinking positive, when you forget about detachment, when you forget about observing your feelings, but really allowing them, really yes them come up there are energy and there's nothing um everything that is also so-called dark all negative feelings is also light because there's only light yeah um it is only energy and when i really understood that when i fully understood that and embraced that i first of all let all the feelings come up because they also brought with them a deeper understanding that liberated, but those feelings also brought up the higher truth. Yes. It revealed the source, if I can say it like that, which is the highest truth. Uh, I was able to clear um, and cleanse, if that is the right word, my body, 
yeah. and and uh, by really take belief systems uh, and look at them and feel them all the concepts about not only about who i am and who i was at that point yes but also what is happening in the world what is happening individually um and to reveal the high, as i said the highest truth i was told um, when i say when i use the word god i really cannot stress enough to say i'm not talking about religions at all i'm yes. talking about god that the only true unconditional love the power of freedom that we are the uh, the life force itself and when i'm talking about that i'm talking about the force of the divine feminine wow and that is what really if we really can fully understand that 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 is we are giving birth to the divine to the power of the divine feminine and and also saying yes to the divine masculine in us when we feel again when I we really, really say yeah I, I really want to I, I totally agree with you i don't i, I want to hear everything you have to say about what you just said uh about birthing the divine feminine or <clears throat> what you were about to say can we come back to that because i really want to talk about that because i feel like you have a lot to offer there and i would like to hear it for myself yeah some clarification now you were you got to 2005 and you you came down with breast cancer after you've done all this inner work and so on you want to go ahead and finish there and let's go back to what you were about to say because i think we'll yeah talk to that for a little bit yeah i will yeah absolutely so yeah i was diagnosed with breast cancer and um and i knew uh, when i discovered i remember there was uh, it was daytime and uh, i was in went into the shower and i discovered that i had a lump in my left breast and i knew i knew then that this is cancer and i knew that this was what i had to experience I knew, I also remember then that um, the reason why I said that I knew was that I knew many years before that, that cancer would be my experience. Um, because I've always been afraid of getting cancer. Yes. And I know, I know also, I just have to say that I know this contradiction saying that I'm fully open my entire life and at the same time be afraid of dying, be afraid of getting cancer. But this is how, this is what I, is called the divine dichotomy that we are in the physical body, we are a human being that will have also all these feelings because we are so um, soaked in this. Um, three-dimensional thinking and belief systems and and concepts uh, so it also very difficult to to and and we are also not in a way it's not um, meant for us to not have human experiences to not have human feelings yeah. otherwise there is no reason for us to be here and, and so how was that, as you went into 2005 and discovered the lump in your breast, knowing you, it sounded like intuitively you just knew what you were about to go through. So you had this connection, uh, undeniable, uninterrupted connection since you were born to God, to yeah. that unconditional love. And at the same time, you had the extreme of your fear coming into being and in, in, in battling cancer. What did that feel like? Did you go back and forth? Did you doubt God? Did you doubt yourself? I mean, what was it part of your transformation? Was it was it key in your transformation, the cancer? Yeah, absolutely it was. Um, um, I have to, um, when I'm talking about the fear, I, as I said, I grew up in a very abusive home my dad was extremely abusive and that was so uh, what can i say so extreme that abuse was so extreme that it took away the the core feeling 
that I was anything worth, that I was, I was told that I was in every way, I was told that I was not divine, that I was not worthy, that I, it was the opposite. Yes. That in a way I didn't deserve to live. And for many years, I was angry at God. I was angry because I believed that I was punished for something that I either had done in past lifetimes or, or if it was something wrong with me that my parents needed to beat me, um, yeah, everything that they did. I, so yes, I started also to doubt what all this was about because they, their energy was so heavy. It was so filled with rage and anger and hate and fear. My dad came from the most, one of the most uh, wealthiest family in Trondheim. Um, uh, and they went, when the bank went bankrupt, they lost everything. And his mom ended up in a psychiatric hospital and his dad died of a heart attack. So, during the years when I started to wake up and started to heal myself, I understood his anger and understood his frustration. And he was living with my mom that was an alcoholic and a psychopath. So I really started to understand it. it was impossible for me also to not doubt myself. But the light was always there. So I never gave up and I was not supposed to give up. It was not in my plan. So, yeah. I doubted myself and as I said, I was also angry at God. But when I got this cancer uh, um, diagnosed and I was told because God started then to really come true. And I also understood that I didn't want answer when I, start, when I wanted answers from God or from the angels because I was too angry. So I didn't want any answer either. So I had to open up fully again and that was when the really beauty started and they also continue a more profound healing wow. and the first time the first time um not the first time i don't remember if there was the first and the second but that easter because this was the easter in 2005 god came to after i'd been to the hospital and was told that i had breast cancer and they was going to operate me after the Easter, that um, God came to and said that I had to get rid of everything, absolutely everything. I had a library in my, ho um, my home, and the biggest wall was filled with books, uh, as I said, about psychology, about metaphysic, about spiritual spiritual teachers. The whole wall was covered with those books, and they was very dear to me. And they also felt it gave me safe a feeling of being safe. But I was told to get rid of them. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> so I did. Um, I gave them away and I sold them. It was completely empty, everything. <coughs> I'm so sorry. No, that's fine. That's fine. Take your time. <clears throat> Take your time. So you got rid of everything. Your books obviously were part of that. Was there anything else that you had to get rid of? Yeah, I had to get rid of my third ex, my third husband also. <laughs> So you had to you had to basically put yourself in the in solitude, universal isolation. Yeah, yeah, was, absolutely. Yeah. I was told to enter silence and to get rid of everything. I was told <clears throat> I was afraid of the connection will will um, will collapse today, but it's my throat that is uh, mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. giving me problems. Let's take your time. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> Let's take your time. But, um, yeah, so <clears throat> I went into solitude like never before. I went into listen like never before to source and be available. And I was told <clears throat> that everything that was happening to me was to be the channel, the medium that I am today. 
and to talk about and channel the new energy, yes. which is again the birth of the divine feminine. Beautiful. <laughs> and to do that, I had to transform all the old belief systems about, as I said, about spirituality, old spirituality, about belief systems and concepts about God, um, about everything, about the, <clears throat> so, the belief systems and concepts about my parents, myself as a woman. And that was in that moment, that Easter and up till now, I started to really, as I said, give birth to the force of the divine feminine. And I slowly went from being a rebel to be this real diva, meaning that you really are standing <clears throat> in your own divine sovereignty. You're standing in truth. Um, you're a truth lover, if I can say it like that. That's beautiful. You are Thank authentic. Um, you don't, um, in a way, I learned the, impo the, the importance of um, not, um, because I see there a lot of people talking about, and we have learned that also, to respect ourselves and to be clear, have clear boundaries. But I learned that that is only ego. Wow. When you really are loyal to who you really are, <clears throat> you don't need boundaries. You just are loyal to what you are here to do, to be and to say and to express and create. And the boundaries are naturally then in that. You just go for that. You go for unconditional love, um, which is what we are. Yes. And the force of the divine feminine is so much more than we have ever experienced before. It is a sensuality. Yes. It is. It is, we are coming back to our senses like never before while we are in a physical body. And our senses is the connection to the essence of truth, yes. to the essence of God. And, and uh, it is the, as I said, it is the power of the divine feminine, which is God in us. And yes. it is also the power of the divine masculine. We women are waking up. We need to learn uh, more about men's senses. Yes. And we, because for a long time in this patriarchal era, which I also understood, we have learned to look at men and fear men, obey men, because we have learned that we has to do that to a God, a patriarchal God. Yes. Yes. So, so let me, let me just get a couple of things. I, I know what you're saying. I just want to say it again, because that's how I learn. Yeah. And so make sure everybody, because this is wonderful, incredible, sacred wisdom. So first of all, I love what you said about the boundaries. Uh, because yeah. I, I observe in the work I do, and, and even like in the research, I guess, you know, reading people's stuff, there has been a, um, what would you call it, uh, a power surge of people's individuality and, and uh, as we make this transition. And sometimes it does come out a little strong. Uh, and I love that you said that, that when you're in that place of unconditional love, you don't really need boundaries because they are there. They are there just by natural law with the yeah. vibration you're carrying. And the second thing, which I really want to hear more about, is I love the fact that you you had to go into this silence and rip every belief. You had to get rid of everything. And of course, in the physical, it was the books and the husband and such, but in the in, in the energetic field you were getting rid of every belief beginning with you know and i'll put it this way that if if god if god has a gender god is a woman you know and and because everything that everything was coming from a patriarchal god which affected each and every belief system we had 
from the from the from the get from the get go. So yeah. that, now you're at a point, or you're discussing something that I find very relevant uh, and vital is that that this divine feminine rebirth that you're talking about uh, is not, of course, obviously is more imprinted in the women for the most part. Uh, but it's actually the part in all of us, men and women, that in regard to what you're talking about, standing in your sovereignty, uh, truth, the absolute truth, what is truth, what is unconditional love, these things that we've been missing, every one of us, regardless of our gender. Uh, and then the last thing I want to say, this is uh, a, a point of thanks and gratitude, is that for you to say, for someone like you, a woman like you, to have gone through everything you've gone through and the journey you've had, to say that, yes, we were all afraid of the men. Uh, even men were. Uh, but to say we need to tap into the senses of the masculine because, because that was a separate journey. It was a different journey. And, uh, and, and we do need to, to understand each other. And uh, Nikki Hammett talks about it a little bit, but I just want to thank you for your, uh, you know, for what you're saying, because it's, it's, uh, it needs to be said and it's good to hear. So you, you, uh, stripped everything down you knew from that point to this day like you said that you're here to bring the what had been suppressed and oppressed the frequency of the divine feminine back to this realm or to this realm right yeah um I, first of all i wanted to say that to do that, to really give birth to the force of the divine feminine, we need to transform, I think, the biggest fear in all of us, and that is the freedom that we are, uh, and to love unconditional. We are really, really still very much afraid of loving unconditional, of actually falling in love, mm. because it's natural for us to fall in love in each other's um, um not uh, not necessarily falling in love with the abuser but to really learn to see that we are not a victim and yeah. uh, to really understand th that all everything that we have been gone that we have been through also the suppress of the divine feminine also suppressing women uh, and and um, where the patriarchal era created a God that was a patriarchy um, that we needed to fear and we needed to obey and don't even think about being able to reach up to that God. That was for sure not uh, as nothing that we women never will be able to do in a way. There were only few selected men and maybe some few women that could reach that God. And by really being told that is is of course then we had to feel safe we had to create uh, a safety um or feeling safe with with things so called outside ourselves uh and there's a lot of things that we created there's also a topic uh, that I, we can talk about another time if that's interest but also this huge concept of twin flames that also is also a concept that we created because we believed in separation and we need to believe in a special love it has created a lot of suffering but the the twin flame it's not and it, it's not the truth. Yes. The only twin flame that we have is, is God and the unconditional love. That is our only twin flame or there's twin flame in everybody we meet that trigger uh, our concepts and our fears and our strong beliefs that we have to have boundaries and that love needs to look like a special way. Uh, so I'm going a little bit back to that Easter and the years after that when I got the cancer because I was also told by God that the reason why I had to transform all my belief systems 
was also because I didn't know how to love. God said, you don't know how to love. You have no idea what real love is. Don't seek love. Seek the truth. Because that is when you come back to your senses. That is when you really will, will again remember who you really are, that you are eternity yourself. Even living in a now moment is an old spiritual concept. Wow. Because the eternity is what we are. And the, the eternity is all that is. And wow. there is no opposite of this. It's... Uh, there's only unconditional love and inside unconditional love because unconditional love is God. Inside yeah. unconditional love, we have experienced every contrast uh, about what unconditional love is not, if I can say it like that. Yeah. We are freedom itself and inside freedom, we have experienced all contrast what freedom is not. So everything is, we are eternity itself. And that is again also the force of the divine feminine that holds everything. We are also being told that forget about the past and don't dwell in the past. And, and we bring that into the future. All these things, sorry to say, is bullshit. Or maybe yeah. this word I was not allowed to say. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta, I gotta tell you something, and maybe uh, I don't know if you, if you need to get a drink of water. That's it, I'm that's, fine now. I was gonna say if you need to, I, I, I want to ask your permission to read something that you wrote. Thank you. Um, yeah, absolutely. I actually got this off your website, um, and I didn't really understand. Now that I'm talking to you, I understand the power and the strength of this piece that you wrote. That's that's just absolutely amazing. Thank you. And again, it speaks to it speaks to the the divine feminine, but it speaks to me too, and I think it would speak to any soul, because that is the part of us that has been suppressed, that's been missing. And I think when people think of the divine feminine or the mother goddess energy, mother, be it Mother Mary or Yemanja or or uh, Magdalene or whatever. They, they obviously pick up on the nurturing aspect, the holding space, the unconditional yeah. love, but they don't always pick up on the power of the divine feminine. So exactly. you, with your permission, uh, this, this powerful piece is called Unfuck Yourself. Right? <laughs> I and thought it, that it, was not a word. It wasn't allowed. <laughs> <laughs> it, says, truth, it says truth is not painful. It is us coming out of the lies that produces this pain. Our feminine practice is to relax the habitual habits of contraction, of control, to open, to stay awake through it all. Now empowerment is no longer something you do or state you achieve. It is, an, it is unrestricted life force rushing through you wildly and magnificently. An awakening woman is enough. She is intimate beyond with all things. Her royal rhythms belong to holy rivers, storms, and sacred winds. She flows and pulsates through all of creation. She knows when and how, when she can take it. Her own time to destroy what no longer serves balance. She is everything. She is ruthless authenticity that cannot be compromised. She knows fully who she is and who she is meant to become. She listens only to those calling. She never participates in anything does not, that does not breed freedom. I am a spiritual woman with no problem, without shame, can say, fuck it, fuck you. Right now, my sacred outburst is unfiltered and uncut. I say, take those motherfucker, ugly, distorted mom, dad that hold their lives more sacred than their children. If my burning words make you shiver, then take your enlightenment and fuck it. You just have to love me for my rawness. I can assure you it is true love in that. Maybe you think. I should be more kind, more nice, more enlightened. Maybe this sacred outburst is unnecessary roughness. And maybe tomorrow I would agree with you. But now on days where children themselves do not want to live because they are so drugged and can barely breathe because their sensitivities are labeled as ADHD, autism, Asperger, and whatever. On those days, I am not the archetype of Mother Mary full of grace. Or maybe those days I really am. On those days, I ride on my broomstick on fire with a tongue long enough to... <laughs> 
<laughs> on those days, you do not want to screw with me. On those days, I'm a volcano, and you don't want to know what I'm capable to do. Absolute everything I am, have ever been, and will always be is spiritual. My grand love belongs to my beloved children, to all children. That's why I unfuck their parents. And my solitude and deep silence is my sacred oneness with God is beyond intimacy. And I will stop there because it is absolutely mind blowing. Uh, thank you for letting me read that. And uh, and I'm sure everybody understood the the, the purpose Greek perf purpose purposely <laughs> authentic raw real frequency that 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 brings to us. Thank, thank you. you for reading it. Yeah. Um, I'm also uh, interested to hear more about what you had to say about your primary, sounds like your primary mission to bring the divine feminine into full presence as evidenced by that incredible piece I just read. Uh, but also you said the divine masculine too. It, yeah. seems, it seems like working with, you know, working with, being in a relationship with, with Morgan for almost four years now, I've learned so much from the sacred wisdom of the divine feminine. Uh, the divine masculine energy is starting to come to the surface, the true divine masculine energy, which I don't even know what that is, but it's powerful. But it, it seems like she has to go first. The divine feminine steps into her power first in this world, both individually and collectively, before this masculine can even think about finding what his power is, because the only power he knew was false. Can you speak to the evolution of that? What occurs why does the divine feminine step up first? And, and what do you know about the masculine following her? And even to the point of what is he bringing to the table? Or do you know? Um, yes, I, I'm so happy for everything that you ask about because it's so, it, this is so really, as I said, what really makes me fly high and make me happy and and really, um, um, it's it's I'm so thankful for everything that you asked me about and absolutely, um, it's a huge passion and it's a huge fire inside of me talking about the force of the divine feminine, and also the divine masculine. <clears throat> And that is also what I learned when God came, as I said earlier, when God came to and said it, you don't know how to love. You don't know what real love is. Uh, you have no idea how to love unconditional because that is who you are. And when I really started to realize, when the clarity started to reveal this truth, this powerful truth, I stopped uh, to look at because I have been married four times and I all of my ex-husbands uh, was for me needed I needed these powerful experiences because I needed to really integrate the the wild woman in me wake up to that and that is not a wild woman that goes crazy in, in their old way of of um, again, the patriarchal concepts, but a wild woman is a woman that really loves unconditionally, fully, completely, totally everything about herself. Also the humanity, the human mess in, her, in herself uh, and embrace that. And when I did that, when I really start, slowly started to understand the profound healing and expansiveness it was in that, <clears throat> I was capable to not see my dad or my husbands as men anymore. I saw them as life itself. And when we can do that, when we women can do that, and also men themselves, that is when women liberate men and give men space to be who they really are. And what men really are, as I said, is life itself. You are life force itself. So are we. 
But if we really, because God also told me that I had to put everything upside down, absolutely everything upside down, the belief system and the concepts about. Oh, you're back. You're back. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Maybe it was on my end. <laughs> you were worried yeah. about your signal and my signal was going back. <laughs> oh, okay. go, ahead. go ahead and continue. I'm sorry. I... That's okay. So I learned uh, because this expansiveness, when you seek the truth and no longer seek love, because there are so many concepts also and belief systems about love. So when I really started to do that. I really started to expand fully. And I went, as I said, also my my three near death experiences yeah. gave me the privilege and the profound seeing and experience who we really are. And I have to I, I when I said that God is a woman, uh, it's not uh, as you understand, it's not a concept uh, of a of of uh, a woman in a physical body as a human <clears throat> but it is uh, the essence of everything that is that is the feminine yeah. it is really the feminine and in the feminine in in that the masculine has to be the true masculine has to be born through her Yes. Meaning we have to stop to see ourselves as victims. But we have to really understand that we are God. Yes. <clears throat> and I, I hear myself that I'm jumping a little bit back and forth. And I know that I'm dropping bombs here and there. I, I know <laughs> that. I, big bombs. But, <laughs> no, but, but you know, I, I totally get what you're saying. And I've, and I've felt this for a long time, even when I was going through my dark night and I really wasn't introduced the seven, eight years ago, I really wasn't introduced to the concept of, you know, I'm masculine and feminine, you know, uh, but I, I, I was homeless for a couple of years when I woke up and I did kind of what you were told, which was get rid of everything. But so it was a very uh, constant communion and I had many rough moments. And yeah. in those in those moments, it took me years later to realize what it was after I met Morgan. But in but that was because I was very masculine. And I even had a problem with the feminine. Yeah. Uh, but there was a force in me that kept me going. There was a force in me that made me be responsible. There was a force in me that made me love deeper, no matter how bad I hurt. And later on, after I met Morgan and started to understand things and get in touch with my own hidden feminine, uh, I started to realize that was the frequency of creation. And that's why I use the term, if God has a gender, God is a woman, because it only mm -hmm. makes sense. There's not a species in the multiverses where the male gives birth, you know, exactly. so there, that feminine energy, as I see it, as I was shown, gave birth to a, a polarity, a mirror of herself and trusted it unconditionally. And that's how this whole dance started. But I totally get what you're saying. I don't think it's a bomb. I think it, I think you're the bomb. You're the fucking bomb, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh God, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, but yeah, it, it's absolutely what you're saying. It's, it's also very profound and very important. And it's vital for, for us as, as in this profound time of awakening and but if we really stretch this further i i will also touch a, a, a small part of this this campaign that is also going on that me too campaign yeah. that of course it's absolutely necessary because we are living in the era of transparency it is absolutely vital and necessary that everything is coming up to the surface and being 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 trans trans um transparent because otherwise we cannot we cannot deal with the lies that has been under the surface for so long for so long but it is 
for us women to fully get it that we are not a victim, that everything that we have gone through has been a much bigger plan that we are not capable of seeing the whole picture in the, on the level that we are. But if we really fully open up and are willing, I'm coming back to this, really willing to love unconditional because that was what I fully understood and was told when I got the cancer that I really needed to give my cancer space to even respect my cancer, to love it, to let her, and I'm saying her, really be able to reveal what I had been lying about, about myself and, and, and for a long time. And to really love the cancer, to really love, uh, even embrace and love the, the unknown and not knowing the outcome. Because of course, in the beginning, I wanted to know if I was going to survive this because I was thinking about my children. I was thinking about my daughter I because I didn't want to leave them because we have an enormous, uh, beautiful, strong connection uh, 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 <clears throat> and so I, I really learned about loving cancer and loving death. And that was the power of the freedom and that I, um, that I uh, really started to remember again who really are. And I was also, um, I got verified these things when, when I was, had this, my three near death experiences. Um, when when i when i realized how powerful it is to love unconditional when i realized and understood that this unconditional love is is not being a doormat it's not accepting everything because oh everything is divine and everything is sacred and everything is exactly how it is everything yes is exactly how it is but also for us to to really uh dare to stand in our in in our own divine sovereignty and when you do that you can really we can really then connect on a level where the divine masculine where the masculine in men have and i'll say the only chance to really evolve is to see that you also are the divine feminine and you need, but you need to expand uh, again to to transform and to expand, not beyond, not go beyond because there's nothing beyond, but to to transform the concepts about what a man is and what a masculinity is and the power of the old masculinity. How that is also um, something that have made men um, imprisoned in a false power that you have lost sight in a way of what true power is and how beautiful you men are and of course how needed you are. And that again will also affect our children and the planet and the divine feminine are to be born uh, fully for the first time in human history, which is what is happening. We are waking up, waking, we have, we are waking up, is that the right word? Yes. Waking up and become conscious like never before, because what is happening here on the planet today has never happened before in human history. That's right. And that is, what women that what can i say wild women women that are awakening uh need the support of awakened men to yeah. do this because that's the whole plan of of the enormous shift that is going on on the planet i i don't know if i really answered you have, you. you've done you've done an incredible job absolutely in fact i would love to talk to you for another two three four hours <laughs> <laughs> the same <laughs> you've got yeah there's so much 
so much that we could talk about, but this this show, uh, the subject matter of this show and the explanations that you've provided in regard to the divine dance of the masculine and the feminine, uh, the, the uh, reality origination of what is source or God, but unconditional love, uh, the power that uh, it exudes, uh, such as evidenced by your writing. I mean, yeah, I think today I, I've, uh, I can say for myself, even though I can't consciously put my finger on everything, you've provided a tremendous amount of code uh, and revelation and epiphany, at least at a soul level that I know my human aspect will catch up with. And I, I'm sure others feel the same way because I can read the energy of the audience. I've always been able to. Um, but I would love to sit down with you again uh, and talk more if you're open Absolutely. to that. I would like Absolutely. to. I'm open to that. And, and I also had a beautiful time. And I'm so, as I said, I'm so grateful and thankful. And I feel so privileged that I was allowed to have this hour with you and with your audience. I'm, I'm sending all of them a huge Norwegian hug. And um, I don't I don't know what what's left of this interview but i just while i'm remember i just want to say that we have no idea how huge this is and how 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 powerful it is to really love unconditional because that is where we can but we can we have the connection to everything we have the connection to the power that we are the divine power we have the connection to the higher truth, to everything. Yeah. And yes, I have the abilities. I am the medium. I am I'm psychic. I'm all these things, but it's abilities. Everybody have it. We all was born open. But I really, really have to say that to really liberate ourselves with all the concepts, by feeling them again, by embracing our human mess, by really integrate our humanity, we will then know God again for real and we will know ourselves again for real. Yeah. Now, do you do, do, you do sessions uh, with people one-on-one -on -one online? Mm, I have been been asked about that, but I haven't done that up till now because I have been too busy having my clients where I live. Oh, and I yeah. and but I I'm absolutely up for it. Uh, I'm okay. I'm so happy if people that your audience that has listened to this or will listen to it later to write me absolutely. Yeah. I will answer, and okay. I'm so glad if, if I can do that. Well, be okay, because I, I know what happens on these shows, and this has been the one of, if not the most powerful show we've, we've ever done, which only makes sense in real time, you know, in the, in the moment, in the present, which is the only thing, right? I mean, eternal present. So I, I've put your... Um, I've put your website in the comments. I'll put it in again. Uh, I've also got it on the screen here. It's an incredible, very well done website. Uh, it's got some incredible information in it, incredible visuals. It's at ingridezhno.com. Uh, look for it in the comments. Uh, this is a new, a new era a new phase a new year 2019 the year of collaboration and uh, co-creation and sovereignty and expansion uh and trilogy is doing its part to bring a, bring forward what we call 5d commerce um, and that is equal energy exchange so by all means uh, as it resonates with you please visit uh ingrid's website uh she said if you want to write to her I don't think she knows what she's getting into, but she's going to get a lot of messages. <laughs> but, uh, but I will I, answer every one of them, no matter what. <laughs> well, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of people watching this replay. Uh, and I want to say also that, uh, you know, Sology is, uh, is a composite of that unconditional love, uh, that pure intention of the heart from the people that 
come and spend their time here from the people that love it, send love and uh, support contributions. Uh, we were all expanding uh, what is reality. Part of that reality is a, a, in the universe, uh, the one law, universal uh, equal energy exchange. So please consider supporting Ingrid, supporting Sology. Uh, we pay it forward. This is about gifting. It's about the honor system. It's about truth. We're all real, just like this woman's website, which is incredible. Hey, <laughs> you've got to read some of this stuff on here. But uh, I just I just want to say again, thank you. Thank you very much on behalf of everybody. I look forward to Morgan and you uh, setting up uh, another collaboration so we can talk more. Uh, thank you so much. For Absolutely. And thank you so much again. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, you take care. Uh, we'll be back in about 50 minutes with our second show of the day. Thank you so much, Ingrid. God bless you. Thank you so much, Zach, and bye-bye. Bye-bye.